Entertainer, I guess it is today. Not today. Well, have, have, have you ever thought that it'd be nice to have a Christmas tree filled with turned wooden ornaments and after you made one or two, you just said, well, maybe it won't happen in this lifetime? <laughs> well, I'm going to try to show you how to make them you know, quickly, easy, and best of all, very cheaply. In fact, like free. So uh, most ornament uh, procedures I've seen and read about starts off with a, uh, a, a block of, you know, two inches or three inch size block, something like that. And uh, this, this is an ornament we, uh, well, but first let me, the, for I know there's some newcomers here today. Uh, I don't know, a year or so ago, I was, I'd made some of these ornaments that I'd given Heather uh, an ornament, and uh, she got to think, she said, you know, I'd, I'd like to have a tree here in the, in the uh, shop that has filled with wooden ornaments. So then she came up with an idea of, of presenting it to the club of, she'd buy the upside down Christmas tree and tasked us with, with making ornaments for it. And then we, the idea was then to auction it off to the highest bidder for, and give, donate the money to uh, charity. But we did that last year and we ended up, I think it was like 250 ornaments we had on the tree. And you'll see it, it Heather was the, Heather, Heather bought the tree, she was the highest bidder. So the tree will be up here at Christmas time, you'll get to see it. But all the ornaments you see hanging up outside here are ornaments that we made, and there's more in the back in storage that they fill that tree up with at Christmas time. Um, and uh, um, drawn a blank. Don Russell makes these, uh, he calls them polychromatic, uh, but he has ornament kits, and he donated, I think it was 10 ornament kits uh, to the club, and it was just the club members had to come down and turn them. Well, this is the one that I did down at Don uh, Ron. Don Russell's house last uh, last year. So with this, it started out with a with a block. It was about oh three inches long and two inches in diameter. It was made up of these uh, black and, and light stripes. So you you start out with with a block of wood, and since it's as big as that, the uh, AAW standards says that the ornament needs to be less than two and a half ounces. So with a bigger block of wood like that, you have to hollow it out. So you start with, start off with a block of wood, and you have to hold it in the chuck somehow, bore through it, and, and hollow the inside out. And now you've got this big hole you've got to cover up. So you, you make an end cap that fits in there, and that's what these parts up here that, 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 that was glued onto that block that's hollowed out. And then an, an eighth of an inch, or a quarter inch hole was drilled through it, so you could put it on a pen mandrel. So you get it all glued up like this, and you put it on a pen mandrel, and then you turn it uh, to, to the shape you want, and then you have to you know, make the finial. But the thing with this is you have to make the finial an icicle to fit that particular body. Um, so it, so it's, it's pretty, I think this was an all-day project, making this one ornament. So another, another popular material to use for a body is, that, that's my depiction of a sea urchin. I already raced the, the nubs off there, but anyway, there's, there's little spines on the top of the sea urchin, and you have to, the, the typical method, I think uh, Steve had did a demonstration here for us a, a year or so ago, but you have to grind off a flat, get rid of those nubs, and then again, you have to make the, 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 the finial on the icicle to fit that particular body, and you have to size it. The, the sea urchin is very fragile. You can't just glue it to the top and bottom. You got to have to have solid wood going through it to, supply, to provide support and then the urchin just sort of fits in there. So you have to, you have to make the, 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 finial and the, the finial and icicle to match that particular ornament or that particular body, which is time consuming. Uh, then uh, one of our local turners, would, would, used to be a wood seller, Mark Slay, came up with a technique that he called toothpick technology. <coughs> And what he did, so he didn't have to deal with the nubs up there, he, the, the urchin has already got a hole in it. And he had a, a 45 degree a rotary stone like for a, a Dremel. And he just, just hand ground it down to give him a 45 degree cone in the top of that ornament and in the bottom. And then he, he made the, the finial and icicle, drilled a hole, first off he drilled a hole in it to accept a toothpick. And then he cut a 45 degree taper on, on, the, on the finial icicle to fit in that 45 degree cone in the, in the body. So the, the benefit that is you, you can just make up finials and, and, and icicles in mass and then you, they'll fit because you've got a 45 degree 
taper here, 45 degree cone in the body, and then up here you had to make this, this the length of this wood bit to fit the body, of, or to fit the, or the sea urchin. Well, down here with that hole drilled there, you just slide it together and put glue in the hole and you slide it onto the toothpick. So it's self-adjusting. You don't have to, uh, to, to do anything specific for that body. You can, you can just make, the ornament, make, make these up in mass and they'll fit because you've got the 45 degree taper and 45 degree cone. So from those two ideas, the idea here about having the, uh, the quarter inch hole to do it on a pen mandrel and having a, a quarter inch tenon on there to fit in that, that, uh, in that hole and, and then the 45 degree tape. So I combine those methods and come up with, with the method I call my quick and easy method. So this is, this is what, what we're going to do today. And you know, here's, here's the pieces that we're going to make. Got a body and uh, a finial and an icicle. And you can, like I say, you can just make up bodies one day and finials and icicles another day and they'll all fit together. And um, every, every, every presentation I've seen or, or read, they, they, they take the, their material and mount it in the chuck like this and they start down here at the, at the, at the tip and work the way back. So this, then this is completely unsupported out here. See all the time you're working down here. So you have to finish down here and get it even, even get it sanded and finished before you get up to here. Because if you get down here, you can't, you can't do any more work down here because there isn't anything supporting it out there. So you have to work your way. And I sort of equate that like building a house from the roof down. Uh, you know, starting here and working up that way. So the way, what I do differently is I hold it in the block like this and I provide support on both ends throughout the entire process. So that, that's the thing that I'm doing differently from the stuff that I've seen in other uh, presentations. Well, I'm going to show you. That's part of the presentation. Okay, and uh, keeping with the, uh, okay, we're done with this now. Any questions on that? So keeping with the, uh, the quick and easy method, um, I don't put a lot of detail in the finials on mine. You know, some, some things you see, this is one that I did, and I put a lot of stuff on there. Just, uh, you know, without any real rhyme or reason, I just put stuff on it. Um, so on these, I just keep it much, much simpler just to make it quickly. Uh, and to go along with my uh, wood turning hobby, I'm also a model railroader. And in model railroading, you, you, you build highly detailed structures and scenery and put them out in the front, and then you fill in the background with stuff that's not detailed quite so much. So your eye sees all the detail on, on the front foreground stuff, and you don't really pick up on the lack of detail in the back. So I consider these ornaments my background and filler ornaments, so you, you can make these that are quick and easy to make, fill up the tree, and then put a few more highly detailed ones out front. That's my theory, that's what I'm sticking with. <laughs> okay, and when considering how, how much time it takes to make something, you have to consider how much time it takes to, to prepare the block of wood so you can actually mount it on the lathe. In a case like this, where you, you're, you're cutting all these pieces here and gluing them together, it probably takes more time to prepare that piece of wood to put it on the lathe than it does to turn it. So when you're thinking of taking a lot of consideration, you know, quick and easy and cheap, you can't get much quicker and easier and cheaper than using this. Scrap pieces of two before. Now that's what I'm going to be using today. Want to pass that around? Let's see it again. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you <laughs> so, so I start. You know, you, you make a couple passes through the table saw, rip that down. I start out with whatever the whatever the thickness of the two before is. That's where I set my fence. This, the, the, my fence width to that. I, I set my fence like that, and then down and rip it through. So I come out with a a square block that way, it had an inch and a half square. Well, whatever the thickness that is, it's approximately an inch and a half. Then I do the same thing on my radial arm saw or chop saw, set my stop block there like that, and then I just come through and cut the pieces off. That's for the body. And the finial on the icicle, same thing, only 7 8 inch square stick, about six and a half inches long. 
and then I get both the finial and icicle out of the one block. So that's the material we're going to be using. Okay, uh, the tools that I'm using, uh, standard roughing gouge. Oh, you spring up, up here or down here? I got it. Put this over here so you can see in both, both places. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, just regular roughing gouge. Got ground about a 45 degree bevel. Uh, a bedan. It's just sort of like a wide parting tool. A skew, and my skew is a little bit differently than most people's skews. I got this something I got from, from Jimmy Clues. You see the, the, the grind on this. See one. See that's got a got a con convex grind instead of a concave that you get off of grinding stuff. Yeah. And I find I, I have much better luck, success, of using the screw ground, skew ground this way than I did with the screw ground coming off the stone where you got a con, concave on it. So that works much better for me. What do you grind that with? Yeah. Well, I, I've got a jewel tool, and that's what I use on a jewel tool. But I just, you know, Jimmy Clue's uh, video on says getting back to basics. <laughs> He shows grinding in that, that bevel like that just on the grinding stove. But instead of holding it on the wheel like that, he just, just strokes it on the stone like this to give him the, yeah. the, the con, convex uh, shape. Uh, and I got several, uh, several spindle gouges. Uh, that, you know, these, these are ones that just come off the grind on you know, the, the one-way uh, grinding uh, fixture that came straight off of that. And I used a second notch from the bottom to get that profile. And then I've got, you know, if you've seen Mark's, Mark Chalet's demonstrations, i got, well, this, is, this is the tool that Mark Chalet uses. It's got, he calls it his uh, parabolic grind. <coughs> and the same on that, you, you can do that on a stone, just, just freehanding on a stone, or I've got a jewel tool, that's what I use. I did the shaping, basic shaping on, on a stone, and then I, uh, then I, I, but I keep it, keep it sharp using the jewel tool. And in case you don't know, the jewel tool is a, it's not cheap, but it's, it's a, it's a motor that, that the shaft comes up and faces you, and then it's got a perforated wheel that screws onto the shaft and the braces on the bottom of this wheel. So when then when the wheel's spinning, you actually can see through it. So you, you're holding it underneath that that rotating wheel like this. So you put a light down there, and you can just rotate it around. You can see exactly. Where, where the grid is, is, uh, is working. And she'll be down at IWF Young. It's, if, if nothing else, you've got to see her demonstration at IWF. Or just, just go online and just, just search the jewel tool. You'll see this big chested, blonde, typical presentable. She's the president and CEO of the company. I think she's from New Jersey, too. She's got a bit of an accent. <laughs> Okay, the, the chucks I'm using are these mid, these, uh, the Tommy bar chucks. Uh, I've heard a lot of people say you don't want to use those. You'd have to have three hands to use them. Well, I've, I've seen videos, Richard Raffin and Cindy Drozer was using these chucks and didn't seem to be having any problem at all using them. So, well, if they can do it, I can use it. And I got two of these for about the price you pay for one, you know, the chuck that you use the key on. So I'm going to show you how easy it is to use these. Uh, as opposed to what some people have told you. Okay, I'm going to use a, uh, a one-way live center. I've got a 60-degree pen point in it. I've got a, uh, this is the, the, the pen state. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if they have it out here or not, but it's pen state. You can, you can, you can get it to order through the store here. But it's called a, a mandrel saver. It's meant to use on a pen mandrel. And it's, uh, instead of having, now this, this has got a 60-degree cone in it. I guess I'm wandering all over the place. I shouldn't stay with the camera. That's got a 60 degree degree depression in it, and it's meant to match with this 60 degree cone on here. But you still that can 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 uh, you can mar up that. Or, so what this is for is it fits over like that to. Uh, that's it. So that's called a, a pen mat pen mandrel saver life saver something like that. And then I'm also going to be using this. Uh, this is the the, uh, the live center that came with my little Delta MIDI lathe out there, and I've knocked the point out of it, so it's so it's hollow 
Just, just, just hollow through it. So I knocked the point out, and I'll show you how I use that also. <laughs> and then, you know, I'm using, I've got uh, <coughs> drill chucks I got from Harbor Freight. They're 12, 12 things, 1295 or something like that. Harbor Freight, number two Morse taper. So I just <coughs> got one for each thing. So I've got a quarter inch drill bit. I've got a, a, a 45 degree countersink that you can get out here. And I've got a uh, 7 8 inch. Uh, Forsner bit, Bosch bit that I got here also. And this thing I like about this one is it's got, you can see on, on it's got serrations. And it gives me a real real clean cut. It's, it's, it's got serrations in there inside. And it doesn't, you don't get the tear out that you do on the cheaper Forsner bits. That was about a $16 bit. Uh, and the pen, pen mandrel, I'm going to use a pen mandrel for turning the bodies. I, I made my own uh, uh, bushings, you know, it, it, in keeping with the cheap, the, instead of buying a set of bushings, I made my own. But it, as it turns out, these are better because you get more riding surface here, get a better friction hold on the, on the wood block, which is bigger than a pen size piece of wood, so you get better, better turning force with that also. I did that is I just put it in, uh, mounted a... Uh, same kind of material I use for the finial. I come come in and I drill a hole just far enough for one thing, and then I make the taper on it and part it off, drill the hole down a little bit farther. If you try drilling the hole all the way down, you'll find that the drill doesn't really go straight down through the wood. It sort of wanders off to the path of least resistance. So I just drill far enough to well, however deep I need to drill it for uh, for one one piece. And oh, one, one, one special tool. I got a, got a special quarter inch caliper. You recognize that? <laughs> yeah. Okay. On with the show here now. Okay, so we start out with the body. And what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to uh, uh, get my, my cone. Gonna, this, this is the final thing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna drill a hole halfway through. And the reason I don't drill it all the way through is again, because the drill bit doesn't necessarily come out in the center on the other side. So I drill come from the center here, I'll drill halfway through, make the cone, flip it over, drill the other way through, make the cone, uh, drill, make the cone. So that's what we're gonna do. And th now this is not the, the, the official approved way to mount something in the chuck. Typically, you, you want to you'd put it between centers, make a tenon on there, and then you would grasp the tenon and, and the shoulder would rest up against the top of the, the, the chuck jaws. But in this case, since I've got a square block of wood, I've got equal pressure on all four sides. Plus, when I turn it, I'm not going to put any lateral force on it. I'm going to be coming in from the end, so it gives you a very secure fit. Okay, and when you, when you tighten this, the thing, this, this chuck is really easy to use once you get used to it. Especially if, if your lathe has a spindle lock. Because this one has a spindle lock, but you have to hold it in. But if you have a, 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 spin, a lathe that has a spindle lock that you can latch it, you just go with one hand and you just go like that. Now, I started out with a talon one-way chuck. And uh, it had a key, a key thing. And then I got a special deal for the uh, Nova G3 chuck. Well, the Talon chuck was made in Canada, and the Nova 3G was made south of the border down in, in uh, Australia. So I think it has to do with the equator, where you turn the, the northern when you turn one way and the southern when you turn the other way. Well, that was really frustrating, trying to figure out, well, which way do I need to turn this? Am I, am I, am I compressing or expanding? And it was really a hassle. Well, this one, the only thing you have to remember is if I go that way, the jaws go in. If I go that way, the jaws come out. That's it. As hard as that. They drive on the wrong side of the street, right. too. Yeah. You know. and the other side. <laughs> 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 yeah. funny. <laughs> so, if you look around here, there's holes around there at various places. There's always going to be, and they're not drilled the same place, so there's always going to be a place where you put the things in, in one hand, and you'll go like that, and just tight. I forgot to bring my magnetic base to hold those. Oh, there we go. There we go. There's my magnet. Okay. 
Okay, now I've seen people, I want to mark the center of this for my drill bit, and I've seen people come around here and put a skew, and you mark the center with the skew. Well, if, if you don't get that skew point in the very center, you're going to end up a little bit of a dimple in the center there, and you, it's not going to be a good starting point for the drill bit. So I just use my, my point here. I want to run this at about, about 1,000 RPMs for the drilling process here. And they just come up here and just that help out. At least make, I can see better anyway. It's in the way of the plant. Can you bring it down there? Good shot of the lamp. Tilt it this way. Well, can you? Like, like that. Can you do that? There you go. Well, can you so, so I've just made a dimple there for the drill bit to start in. And I use the, the marks on here starting out at about a half, and I go into uh, about one and a quarter. When you're backing it out, you always want to hold on to the drill chuck. Please. <laughs> okay, so I need to uh, get this out. I've never had it, so. They're putting in the, the countersink. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Now, I've tried doing this on a drill press during the hole in the countersink. The countersink, again, it doesn't go right straight down the center when you do it on drill press. You think here, if you got this all fixed nice and solid and going, it still doesn't really stay in the center. It wants to work off a little bit. Plus, this gets very hot if you try to do that whole hole with that. It's going to get very hot. So I started off, get my uh, cone started with, uh, with the gouge. Go up to about 2,000 RPMs for that. I want to forget about one important thing. At home, I, 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 no matter what I'm doing, I've got a full face shield with a with a dust mask on. Okay, so if I just tried to plunge this in like this, if if I got that that tip completely vertical. In line, it would probably work okay if it's skewed a little bit either way, it's going to go off one way or another. So you come in, get put the bevel on it, and then just bring it around. Thank you. Okay, Thank now you. I'll go back down yeah. about about a thousand for that. Zoom it in though. I'm gonna fix it. <laughs> How's that? Okay, so just just all I need now is just to touch it up, just to to, to reestablish just a, a good 45 degree cone there. Okay, again, I just spin around to find the holes that I want. Those two holes there look good. And I just like that with one hand. And you're doing that with the end grain, right? Yes, this is end grain. I'm doing, this is all spindle work well, on this block. Now you could do it, do it side grain like a bowl type grain, but pine would really give you a lot of tear out doing, trying to do it with pine. Mark the mark the center. And that's why I just drill drill through until I run out of resistance and that's it. Thousand. 
Now, if you if the, you use the formula for turning, the, your, the, the, formula is, uh, the diameter times the RPM should be in the range of six to nine thousand. So with this size of wood, I could run that full speed. But I feel much more comfortable running at two thousand RPMs in full speed. So whatever feels comfortable for you, that's the speed you should use. That's the preparation work for the body itself. Some hardware store, can't remember which one it was. I was looking for, I was originally, originally looking for a crescent wrench. It's a plumbing tool. It's well, for, yeah, for it, it, it says that it's a, a lock nut wrench, slip, slip and lock nut wrench. Well, somebody told me it was a plumbing wrench used for. Six. Yes. Okay. It was big. Some wrench. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll pass, I passed it around down a peach state the other night. I had it, I had it, had it set for the right lit, lit and I, was, I had, had a thumb screw in there, and I had it tightened down as tight as I could get it. And, uh, they asked about it down there, so I passed around. It came back to me. It was all loose, and <laughs> so I, I put a put a wrench nut on there. And I tightened that down as tight as I could get it, so I can pass it around there if you want to see it. And I don't think we'll get moved. Would you pass that open end wrench around with with it at the same time? I didn't think that. <laughs> That, that's probably where I got it, it was handy hard, right? I know I looked around, I, I didn't know what I was looking for. I was just like, say, I turned my crest wrench, but the crest wrench would come, the, the, most crest wrenches would lack to getting that wide by about a sixteenth of an inch. Well, the crest wrench that was big enough to go that wide had a handle about this long, and the jaws were too wide to fit in the notch. So that was perfect. Okay. We'll just clean out. We've got a little plugged up in the hole there. We'll just clean that out a bit. <coughs> oh, let me do one of these. I know somebody asked me about this the other day. So we'll show you how to make the, the, the bodies here with the, uh, with the holes in. You have to tighten that up pretty tight. Like I say, this, this is a bit more wood than what you have for a typical pen. So you have to get that pretty snug. And since this is riding on that, the, 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 I've seen people take the, don't not use this neural nub, they'll just go on down past the threaded area and just use the pressure from the tailstock to hold it tight. Well, again, on a pen, that's probably okay. But you're putting a lot of, lot of undue pressure on the, on the <coughs> headstock bearings, which maybe can stand it, but you're also putting a lot of pressure on this bearing here. So I don't see any point in doing that. I still use this neural nut to keep the, the tension on there, and then I'll have that on there. But since that's riding on the bearings, on the uh, threads, I'll just take a little bit of masking tape. And, and also, there's just a slight amount of slop in there. This hole is just slightly larger than that, that bear, the, uh, the thread area. So I just take a piece of... Uh, Piece of masking tape, half inch masking tape is, ju is, is just about the right width to make one, one pass around there without overlapping. Dad, what, what would we use if we didn't have the manual saver? I want to go home and do this now. But well, you can, use, you can use this kind of a point. You can okay. use that point to go in there. Um, yeah. What? 
but I've, I've got this, so I use it. Uh, uh, yeah, or did. <laughs> but yeah, whatever you use to make, whatever you turn pins with, use the same thing for making pins. If you have a pin mandrel, you, you, have, some, you have some kind of a, something that fits in the end of it, yeah. But yeah, that works fine. But I'm also going to show you how to use this also uh, on a, one of the other steps, too. Okay. And that, that thing is like $12 from pins. And you get it, then you get it here, you get 10% off of that. Okay, here, I'll do it. It's all about justifying purchasing tools right. here. Yeah, and if you buy cool. something, you, <laughs> if you buy something, get you have to use program, it. Get the program, girl. <laughs> And, and, I, and I, I make a trinket. I make a trinket of some sort for my wife occasionally, just to justify buying tools. That's why we don't have Jane do more demos. She doesn't spend any money on tools. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to use a, uh, the the spindle roughing gouge to, to knock off the corners on that. And I'm going to do about 2,000 RPMs. George. Haven't had one fly off yet. Okay, now before we get too far on this on the center one here, I wanted to show you. In fact, I got down a little bit farther than what I really wanted to go anyway. But you see, there's there's two different profiles here of these these ornaments that are hollow that's got the holes in them. You see this this one this 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 one is, is has pretty pretty straight sides on it. And it's the 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 uh, the pieces piece in between here are much thinner. Where this one you, you look at the profile on that one is much rounder. Well to get those different profiles, if I was to go take this all the way down to get rid of all the flat spots like I'm going to do on this one, I would end up with that kind of profile. But what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to, going to take it down. I've, I've already got it down farther than what I really needed to go. I got the, I've got rid of the flat spots here and here. So that's all the farther I'm going to take that down there. So then I'm going to well, start rounding it off. I'm going to round it off until I get rid of the flat spots here and here. And then that'll give me that kind of a profile. And by the way, for the for the... For the one and a half inch block I'm using, I'm, I used a four, uh, seven eighths inch Forstner bit, and the way I did that was, you know, I, I started out doing the same thing we did here, flipped it around the other way, and held it in the same chuck, and drilled the seven eighths inch Forstner halfway through, and just went through all four sides and drilled it halfway through from all four sides. Okay, we'll go ahead and get these outside ones, get them rounded down all the way. going to uh, give me a much cleaner cut here. Just, I'm just focus on, on the center parts here. We're going to be rounding off the edges anyway, so I don't really need to worry about that. I'm just going to use the skew just to give me a, uh, a much smoother cut there in the center. So I'm not going to attempt them up. My plan is not to have to do any more sandy sanding on there now. They've got a smooth surface with the skew. Okay, so now we need to start doing our design. 
Is there any particular design up there you'd like to see? Okay, well, I'll choose then if nobody else wants to choose. We'll make one, we'll do one symmetrical and we'll do one that's purposely. If you have trouble making it symmetrical, then the alternate is make one that's asymmetrical. You don't have to worry about being symmetrical then. Right. Okay, now, the, 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 since the pine is kind of bland, I like to put the burn marks on there. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll do this one down here. We'll, we'll make this the asymmetrical one. And I'm, I'll just put some uh, mark where I want to put the things. I'll come in about, say, a 5 sixteenths of an inch in from the top. Up there. And then, so here, since we're going to make this one, or attempt to make this one symmetrical, we'll come into the center on this one. Okay, one, one other tool I'm using that I forgot to tell you about was a point tool. It's just, it's just ground to like a pyramid. And I'm just going to use that to, to uh, give me just a little bit of a groove there for the wire to follow. I got some real expensive wire from the hardware store. I think it came in a roll for, you know, a 50 foot roll for a couple dollars. Okay, now I'm not going to hold this like this because if it should catch, I, don't, I wouldn't be able to let go of it. I'm going to hold it out like this so if it, would, if it catches, then it will pull out of my hands. And you need some speed and, and pressure to give, to give you some heat. I want to touch that for a while. Okay, so now we'll, we'll round them over. Okay, we'll start down here, just because that's the easiest one. Okay, now I'm going to come in and I'm going to ride the bevel. And, and the motion is, I want, I want to get, get the bevel cutting, and I'm going to, you have to rotate it around to get, it, get the cut. And then, and then when you come around the corner, you've got to swing the handle around. You need that bevel to be riding the contour that you want to cut, but you need to end up down here with a point going directly in toward the center, like that. You know, here on this one, I'm gonna again. I'm gonna I'm gonna round this one over until they get rid of the flats there, and then that'll that'll give me that uh, that profile I was looking for.
Uh, so what, what happened, uh, this, this, I should have been using this gouge here. This has got a finer point on it. This, this one's got a, this, it, it's got a, a the, the angle on there plus, so I don't have very much clear, I, I got, don't have as much clearance with this because it's much wider through there. So this, this is the one I really should have been using. Let's come back and fix this one now. Yeah, still, I still got a little bit of flat. Can you see it in there? There's still a bit of flat there. So I need to take some more off of that. There's still yet. And when I'm doing this, I'm, I'm watching the profile that's being developed up here instead of down here where the tool is cutting. So I can, I can see up here and better see what the shape that's coming out by watching up there. Now this, I'm going to put, put a friction polish on these two, but this in here with all the holes in there, you can't really put the friction polish in there. So the way I do those is I'll just take that and, and, and put it in a, you know, either use the, the Watco Danish oil or the Watco teak oil. I've had better success on this with the teak oil because it's got more solids in it. If you let the teak oil sit there, it's, it has a lot of stuff that's sent this to the bottom. So I stir that up. I just have a, a little peanut butter jar and I'll just throw them in there and let them soak for a day or so. 
and then take it out, let it dry for a week, and then, then I'll just buff it with the Beal system. Okay, so the, so these are these are ready to go now. You, if you want to really get picky, you could probably go in there and sand. There's maybe some little little marks there you could sand off. But I'm going to show you what it looks like without any sanding. This is something else I got from Mark Chalet. Paper your regular paper towel, wrap masking tape around it, cut it into two-inch wide strips on the bandsaw. <laughs> And why, why have a big wad of paper towel when that's all you need? That's cool. Okay, what I'm using here is, is the Triple E Ultra Shine. It's out here on the shelf. It's, it's a, a little bit of abrasive. It's, I think it's got wax and shellac in it, but it's got a little bit of abrasive in it also. Now run this down to do about 1,000 RPMs for this. Out of, the, out of the groove, take any excess dry off. <clears throat> I had my tools out in the car today. I really got soft from the heat sitting in the garage. Okay, and this is uh, Milan's Friction Polish, M-Y-L-A-N-D-S. Now, I don't know, there, there's also a, a cut crystal coat friction polish. I don't think they have either one of them out here at the store, but they're, uh, they're available at other places. I talked about a few weeks ago, I'm going to try to get them in. Okay. And then to put this on, you need, for this to work, you need, need some, generate some heat. So I'm going to turn it back up to about 2,000. And your finger will tell you when you get enough heat. <laughs> and if you're not wearing glasses, you might get the stuff splattered in your eyes. So I always wear my face shield and my eyeglass so I don't get splattered on my glasses. Yep, that was getting hot. And I usually do about two coats. Spacers there. Oh, when I get them cut up bad. These are the, I've been using these for probably 50 ornaments. The, the, some of them are getting nicked up a little bit there, but they're, they're still working. <coughs> yeah, the spacers, are they doubled the same way that? Yeah, 45 degree. And I'll show you how I get that 45 degree cone when I do the, the signals and stuff. So there's a mandrel. No, this this is a mandrel got a wood craft. It's got it's threaded down here at the quarter quarter of a twenty thread. So you can use it as a uh, a quarter inch collet. Put a draw bar in here to hold it into the into the, into the taper, and you can use it as a regular quarter inch collet. And also, so I, when I was doing the original thing, I got that down farther than what I really need to have, so it's not not rounded there like you like you really want it to be. But you get the idea of what it. Uh, <coughs> If any questions, just speak up. How are you on? 
Okay. I'm not a pen turner. If I wanted the, if any on the ice would be of exotic wood, can you use pen blanks or that the wrong size? Well, yeah, you can use pen blanks. It did, I, I start out with five or seven eighths. Pen blank, I think, is three quarters, I believe. Yeah. Uh, so you're not going to get it quite as big in diameter. There's no room for error. Yeah. yeah. But with with a pen, a, a pen blank is five inches long. And really be tight trying to get both finial and icicle unless you, want, unless you just want a shorter icicle out of a single piece. So I've got these six and a half inches. That gives me a little to put in the chuck, and I got through them then to work with to get both pieces out of a single piece of wood. Is that the pan uh, line two? Yes, and all this is, well, it's two before, whatever two before is made out of. <laughs> you can buy a pen blanks in different sizes. Yeah, so you, you can buy a bigger pen blanks huh? or cut your own. Okay, now I, I, again, this is my stock. Uh, and what I did is, I, I, since, it, yeah, since it's square, I, I just put it in here and just held it like that. I got equal pressure on, 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 on all four sides. Brought the tail center, the live center, then rounded it down, cut a tenon on the end. And I can do that if you want me to do it, or I'll just if you see me rough enough stuff out. So, so that, that's how I got to that point. Before I tighten it up in the truck, I'll go ahead and get it in the center here. And again, okay, there's the holes there. I want this wheel to go that way, so I put one there and one there. And like that. Isn't that easier than using the chuck key trying to find out the hole and then get the gears lined up and remember which way you got to turn it? Well, I'm a little belt of anyway, these go between one and five. They don't have to sit there and play with the dial. Okay, I'm going to start off making, making a quarter inch tenon. I got my arm over here pressing pretty close to that chuck. I, I've taken all the sharp, taken a file and filed off all the sharp points on that direction so it's smooth. I don't have to worry about any sharp things out there grabbing a hold of my arm. Did you round off the corners of that wrench? Damn. No. I could have. I didn't. Don't have a catch. Huh? Well, I don't jam it on there. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's just, just as it came out of the, okay. the diamond, or the, uh, this is probably a Chinese made one, you know, for, it's supposed to be forged steel made in Taiwan. Could have sharpened it, wouldn't you? Okay, I'm going to make a 45 degree cone on here now to, or taper to, to fit in my uh, cone on the body. That's a 45 degree taper on there, so should be able to hold it like that and go in. But I, so it should be. I'll show you how I, I get the final verify that it's 45 degrees. And I like to wrap my fingers around stuff here. Oh, let's put that aside. I got a 
go hobby store model builder's rule. I just that's how I check to make sure I got a 45 degree. I get down, get my hand down there for some time. Get going off up here. That's how you verify that you got the, the thing to that. Okay, so next thing I want to, I want to sort of the idea how, how long I want to make my, my little finial. Well, so I need to come out to about there. So we'll, we'll, I'll go, I'll come in, on, so I'm going to make, I'll leave about that much room to work with, and I'll come in here and make another, make the tenon for the icicle, just to get that wood out of the way. Some of this wood that we don't need. Well, don't forget the bevel stuff. Forget right? the. Uh... Now, if I, I don't want to, if I came in right here, I might have trouble holding and get a nice sharp edge. So I'll come back here and just, just get rid of some wood and, and sneak up on that bevel to give me a nice sharp, sharp edge on that that first element there. Okay, so now I'm just going to hog away some of that other wood. ball on the top of the thing you about the same size as that quarter inch diameter. Start the, start the little ball on top. Okay now I just need to paper this down to there and that's that. I forgot to show you where I use that other that pin saver mandle on here. I've got the cone, this point still in here. It, this, this is pretty small, it's not really a problem, but if there's any kind of fractures in that wood, I really don't have a real secure hold out here. But that's where I would use that pin saver mandle and go with that quarter inch thing, take this off, put it on in place of it. It would give me a firmer, firmer grasp. But I say on the, on the icicle, it's more important. Somebody got to remember to tell me to put that on, on the icicle. Because I get, I get carried away in making the shape and forget about putting that on. Again, go back up about 2,000 to put the friction polish on. Okay, now if I if I was to part that off now, that would go flying and not turn out very nice. So, I'm going to put, still to have support. That's why I'm going to use this the the live center that's got the hole through the center. 
And I'm just going to bring it up. Like I would, and then I'm just going to back it off just to where the barrier, where, where the barrier stops turning. So I'm not if I if I had pressure on this and I started parting that off when I got down to real close fibers, it would twist that off and tear a big chunk out of the end of that thingy, which I don't want. So that again, there's there's. There's, there's, that bearing is not really doing anything, even though it's spinning now, it's not really pressing against it. So now I could use oh, another tool I forgot to show you. I could use this tool again, but I might have the same problem I did on the other where it, where it skated. And what happens when you're trying to get down at a real fine point, if you hit on your, your flutes here, that's what causes that. You, you come down and hit the flute. So this is a tool that... Cindy Drosia has a tool, something like this, she calls a Vortec tool. And this is a piece of that quarter inch steel that, we got to, that Steve had got. And I just ground it down, took it on, on the, weed, the stone, and, and gave me that, that, con, con, or that con, concave top end with no, no flutes in it. And then used the, just a freehand to give me the, the parabolic type curve on the back. So without any flutes, I can get down into a much finer, finer place. So I'm going to start over here just, just by taking, get, getting rid of some of the, the waste wood. I'm going to a wood waster, George. <laughs> and just sort of work my way down there and convince it that it really needs to come apart. So we'll, we'll I'll show you how I polish that tip up to clean that up later. <coughs> so we need now to, we're going to start on the end. Now something else I forgot to do in there. At this point, well, I'll do it on this one. But if you if you do make your tenon the uh, the quarter inch tenon loose, or if you want to do something like this, where you say you might want to put some little ornament in there, like a little Christmas tree or Santa Claus or a little homemade Santa Claus, Christmas <coughs> some plastic thing from from. Hobby Lobby or something, or something would turn in there with the with the toothpick holes in there, like Mark uses. Then you can use that to mount that that little ornament inside there. So I'll I'll, I'll drill a hole in this one, like I should have done on that one. So I'm just going to clean this up to give me a good good end. Okay. How are we doing time? Then we need to see we've been at it for now. We're going to take a break in about 15 minutes. Then we need to take a break and walk around. Are you okay? So I'm just going to use this to mark the center for my, my drill hole. Then I got a toothpick size drill bit. All toothpicks aren't created equal, so you've got to get your toothpick and figure out what size drill you need. Uh, they don't have them here. Uh, uh, this, is, this came out of a numbered set of drill bits. Um, typically, stuff I buy at Harbor Freight, I sort of figure, well, I'm going to get what I pay for. Well, you get a, an index of so size 1 through 60 for like $20. So this is a numbered <laughs> drill bit that, that just the slightly smaller than the toothpick. In case my tenon is loose, and I need to use a toothpick to glue it together, or if I'm using this, this one right here and I want to put something in there. So the toothpick is just there just in case. Or the hole for the toothpick is just in case. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll still need this for a time. What's that? No, I forgot to drill a hole now. Yeah, I would, have, I would have drilled a hole in it just like I did in this one, yeah.
So same thing as I did on the on the finial. I want to give me a nice, nice sharp edge right there to the, into the taper, and you can use this a regular quarter inch well pin also. Pat, so I can now I can put that other center on there, the mandrel saver center, to give me more more a more positive support on the outside instead of that little pinhole in the center. Like say if there's if there's a split in there, when I get down there and start putting pressure on this to haul that wood away, it could split that out. Does your pointless thing not fit that approximately too? What's that? The one that's what you do not to point out is the live center. I mean, that, you know, the live center, does it not fit? Well, it's a much finer point. It would penetrate a lot farther. Mm -hmm. But then I wouldn't be able to use it for what I want to use it for if I still had a point in there. Well, but the hole's bigger. Yeah. Using it now. Okay. Oh, whoa, whoa. It, why I don't use it now? Because when I start applying my friction polish, when I get the friction polish on that black metal, black metal comes off onto my pad, and then I get a black stain on my wood. Good answer. Mm -hmm. I've done that. <laughs> so again, I've got this one, so I use it. Okay, now when, when you make the, the, the uh, elements on the, on the icicle, uh, you want, I don't know how one's got more than, yeah, here. When you, when you start putting multiple elements on, on the ornament, you want, you want them to be, each, each one down is a little bit smaller. You don't want to have a, one here and a small one and a big one out here. You want it to be a uniform, if you, where if you put a ruler, a ruler on it, they're all you know, lined up. You want your elements to be so that's that sort of a, a relationship to each other. Where they just each one, each successive element is a little bit smaller. So I'm going to just come in here and, and just get down to a, just guess on a size that I want for that next element. I use this one to get the get the basic shape I want because it's a little bit easier to control. When I get down to the real fine stuff there, I want to go back to this one because I don't have the wings on there. You come up and grab on the other side. And this allows me to get down there and get a real nice fine, fine groove down there. So now I want to go ahead and, and define the other the bottom shape of this so I have so I can see down there and see where I'm something to shoot for. So I'm just going to come in here and just Define that the shape, and again, I'm watching. I'm watching the profile develop up here, not down here where the tool's at. Okay. And I just want to go in and get rid of, get rid of some of this other waste wood. Okay, so now I want to come down here and define the diameter of, of the bottom piece down here. And I want to leave room for the little teardrop piece down there, so I'm going to come down and get, get down to that the diameter I want to have for that.
Okay, so now it gives me something. I work from both ends. I want to have, instead of just a taper all the way down to the bottom, I want it to flare out a little bit. So I want the actual, the, the narrow part up there a bit higher up so that this, the bottom piece sort of flares, goes in on the top and they sort of meet somewhere about in there. So I will use a little bit of sandpaper on this because there's, there's a few little little ridges there. Turn down to about a thousand. Start out with 180. So 220. Okay, so instead of making, it won't make us any, any thicker, thinner here right now, I'll go ahead and get this finished up here. Now this is where if I had that other, other cone on there, when I tried to get there at the finish, that's where I'd get, I'd run into the problem of having that getting black off of that metal. about 2,000. Okay, so now before I get any thinner down here, if I get down too thin here, if I'm driving this bearing out here, you see right there, there's a, there's a little bit of flex in it. It would twist, you know, I was doing it down a peach state there, and I would twist it off right here. Because <coughs> I, I put too much pressure on it.
just that just wobbling a little bit, but it's still the thing is I still got support out there on, on the end. Again, my little my flame has got to be smaller the diameter of my flame has got to be smaller than that. You can come in there like that. Again, I just sort of nice little easy easy cuts, light cuts, and just convince it that it needs really needs to come apart right there. And I'm not really putting any pressure with my left hand, I'm just holding it to keep it from making that noise. So there's just a little bit of touch-up on that point. And I'll show you how to do that next. Probably make a couple things out of that, can't you, George? Yeah, I do. There you go. I know uh, uh, Hans could. Yeah, Hans would use it. He'd make a puzzle like that. He would make a puzzle. Okay, now I've seen people do demonstrations where they put a chuck like this on there, get a block of wood, put it in there, make a waste block, and then when you come back and want to use it again, it doesn't run true, and you see, you make another one. and. So I've, I've made my own waste blocks. I've, I started out with a couple pieces of uh, Baltic birch plywood. I've done it with, with uh, just two before also and get pretty good results with that. But I drill a 7 8 this my 1 inch spindle, I drill a 7 8 inch hole. And then using the be all tap, I threaded it. Well, first I would drill the hole. I put thin CA in there to strengthen the wood fibers, tap it, put more CA in, let it set overnight, put more CA in, then come back and re-tap it again and you end up with really nice clean threads. So then I glue, glue another block on it, uh, drill a hole, <coughs> turn down a, a piece of pine here and put it in there so when this gets worn down I just drill another hole, stick another piece of pine in there and I don't ever have to make another... Oh, that doesn't have a hold on there. Wrong <laughs> side. And if your hole, when, then what I did to, to do it, I just drilled a quarter inch hole in there and made a 45 degree cone, just the same as what's in the body. So now I can take this, and if it, the fit is not real tight, what, if, you, if you use this after a while, it'll, it'll get, the wood's pretty soft, so I, I just put medium C in there in the hole, let it sit, and come back and re-drill it, get another quarter inch hole. So if it's loose like that, you just take a little piece of paper towel, Start off 180, do some more, a little more shaping on there. And you see it's wobbling a little bit, but you, once you get a hold of it, you can you can hold it steady.
Which one? <laughs> Ready to finish that. If you want to pass that, that finial piece that I did earlier, if you want to pass that back up, I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll get that finished also. Go down to about a thousand. Okay, and we'll go through the same motion on this one, but we got to drill a hole in it too. <coughs> oh, that one fits tight enough as it is. I got that that tendon was a little bit too small on that one. Actually, I just just need to touch that just a little bit. Let me see. Hole. You need to drill the hole for the eye screw or screw eye. <coughs> and again, I got a number drill bit for the size eye screws that I have that, that came out from out here on the shelf. that with a hole in it. Okay, next thing is assembly. Is one of those bodies we did today or? Uh, everybody look at that ISO man. So I start, I start with the, uh, the finial first, then I can give it, I can give it a nice press if, it, if, it, if it's tight, press it in. And then when I put this in last, I, can, I got something here I can push on pressing against there to, to get it all pressed together. So I'm just going to use some uh, medium CA. And I'm going to put, put the glue down in the quarter, just at the beginning of the quarter inch hole. If I put the glue up around here, it might squeeze out and you'd see it around the top. So if you get it down there in the, in the in the hole, in the, where, where the quarter inch hole just starts, put it in there, then you don't have to worry about it squeezing out. You might mention, Dan, that that's why you're doing the 45 degree to begin with? Yes, because it, all, it makes it all universal. And you can, you can make, like I say, you can make bodies one day and finials another day and and, and they're all going to fit together. You also avoid the glue squeeze out. Right. Yeah, that was one of the things that Mark said about his 
when he with his toothpick, he put the, he actually puts the glue in the toothpick hole, so it doesn't even anywhere close to the or the urchin body. Yeah. And there's the, I think I don't know if they got the cop the, the copper colored ones out here. No, these are silver ones. I know I know they got these here. I don't know if they got other colors or not. Yeah, that. That that tendon was a little bit, a little bit loose, a little bit small. So it's not completely dry just yet. Is this what puts try putting some? I don't know if that makes it set any quicker or not. Just keep in mind that that, that, that the bicycle's not completely set yet. But there's the there it is. So you you make that one, you hold it up. You hold your first off in a mire and see, I only got about 200 more to go. <laughs> Good start. Have you, have you done a write up on this process? Yeah. Me. Is there somewhere? Uh, if you want, you know, I can do one. You know, I don't know if Heather was here. She made copies, but that's quite a bit to ask her to copy. GAW Turner at hotmail.com. You can send me an email to there. I can send you a PDF file. Or I don't know, can we put stuff, can we put files on the website? Documents no. on the website? Not yet. So yeah, just send, send an email to gaw-turner at hotmail.com. Make it GWA. Yeah, yeah GWA, isn't that what it says? Yeah, GWA. Okay, <laughs> well, I, I'm, 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 I, I used to study under Jack. Yes, yeah. oh, okay. That's right. He always says GAW too. Sure. Our tools and stuff is all labeled GAW. Mm -hmm. right? <laughs> but yeah, send it to there and I'll, I'll, I'll send you a PDF file. Not on YouTube with it? Huh? Got on the other the other demonstration I did back what last fall, that, that is on YouTube. So if you just search my name on YouTube, there is a demo of the one I did last October or something. Here's about an hour of a 13 minute long video of this. I think I've changed my changed a little bit. I think I got better. Uh, but yeah, it sits there for you know this one's a lot different.